Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here, all these trays on this shelf, they're all worm bins. And if you look at the way I've got them labeled, each of them has some sort of a description in terms of what type of a population lives in the container. I'm just using these um, abbreviations for worm types. The NC at the end stands for Nightcrawler. In this case, the ANC is an African. This one, the E, is a European. Those are just Nightcrawlers. I use those labels to show me what kind of worms I've got in a bin, unless the bin has no label, in which case it's assumed that I'm just running red wigglers, which is like your most common worm type that's used for composting. Any tray like this one here, no label. This one here, no label. Red wigglers are red wigglers for the most part, but this tray here of red wigglers I distinguish as a separate population because I can trace these worms back to the original population that I started composting with. All the others, the, the other red wiggler trays originated from my outdoor compost barrel, the night crawlers and the blue worms and stuff like that. Those all came from other worm farmers who traded with me. So today we're checking in on what I kind of treat as my original population. The red wiggler bin that's been running for 145 days now 10 days since we last checked in on it and gave it some food and this could be maybe it's 14th or 15th feeding I don't recall so I'm gonna get this thing up on the bench slip on a glove and we'll see how things look in here I'm always excited to see how things in this bin are coming along this is such a Cinderella story on this uh, bin starting out with such a few tiny tiny number of worms working their way up into pretty nice size population at this point one that's been around long enough that it's already probably got a couple generations worth of uh, babies that have probably come off the original few survivors that I was able to revive into a pretty much a regular size worm tray anymore. There was times when this population of worms was um, so small that I probably felt like I could have counted it on a single hand. Um, maybe not that low, but pretty close, you know, almost single digits. And to see how they've bounced back from so few numbers to, you know, a regular a regular worm bin that just seems to have worms all over the place, you know. It, it used to take uh, a couple minutes of picking through the material to find even a single worm <laughs> originally way back when. And my, how things have changed in here. It's so cool to see. So, you know, I did start into reviewing the video from last time. I got, got into the first just couple seconds. Um, just long enough to know that it was 10 days since we um, had waited before feeding it last time. And I know that from my spreadsheet that this is now 10 days since we fed it last again. So it's been on these sort of 10-day intervals between feedings. This is like the, the tough, tough part of the end of a vegetable. And they've worked down all of the softer stuff, some of which is still here in a mushy, gooey ball with some worms hanging out in it. So that's pretty neat. I don't think keeping it together is all that important, but I'll just put it there so we could see it together, probably for the very last time. That that little stem and that little, you know, kind of burst around the stem of tougher material that they've not been able to break down yet. You know, the operative, operative word there is yet. They'll definitely break it down in short order. This bin being 145 days old, I would have to guess now that it's been a couple feedings that we've probably withheld any fresh leaves or cardboard or paper or whatever. Any fresh bedding in anticipation of the bin eventually getting to the finish point where we would want to consider harvesting the castings. A lot of people when they harvest castings will run them through a sieve, kind of separate anything that's really nice fine material from stuff that's still got some time to go before it breaks down completely. If I, if I needed to do that to this stuff, I don't think it would work very well because the material has a really high moisture content to it right now, which uh, is probably super for the breakdown of the materials that still remain in this. And there's a good amount of it, as you can see, some of it's bigger than others. These banana, uh, banana peels, pretty good sized chunks of stuff. And if we really wanted to, we could just let them continue on the leftovers. But I like to 
I like to treat all these leftovers as stuff that they, they could probably be working on now or very soon now that it's had a good chance to decompose and break down this far and then that stuff that I'm putting in now you know let it start into that decomposition process so the worms can eventually make use of it so my expectation is never that they're going to jump right on the new food it's always my expectation that they're going to continue uh, working on the stuff that's already nicely broken down and then eventually get to the newer things as they age and uh, become more easy for the worms to slurp up yeah pretty damp you know I mean sometimes I would want to consider doing away with the plastic covering on a on a bin that's fairly damp and start watching the material in the bin get a little bit more um, flaky you know crumbly because this stuff is just it's a lot of nice castings but it's kind of hard to tell where the castings end and where the leftover bits of food and bedding begin so there's uh there wouldn't even be a good opportunity here to sift and separate this you know this batch of castings I see a lot of people do these sort of partial harvests of their castings out of the material sort of just grab their sifter and do a few handfuls try to grab some of that stuff periodically as the bin goes on something I've never tried but I like the idea <laughs> all right I'm kind of making a big huge hole here the stuff that I bought is frozen frozen uh, frozen peels of potato and the interesting thing is that that core sort of stem center part of a head of red or purple cabbage there's the stem end of it and um, you know I guess just in the interest of getting all the softer stuff um, the metal stuff was sort of left behind but the worms are going to really like that I'm sure of it but since it's a frozen mass and you know something that size and that dense is going to take a little time before it'll thaw I thought it'd be nice if I could just sort of isolate these frozen materials from the worms to a certain degree or at least make it easy enough for them to squirm away from this stuff if they don't like it and at least we're not you know sort of burying worms in frozen material so all this stuff out here on the edge being exposed to these bright overhead lights has for the most part been depopulated of worms they're all they've all squirmed back into the material that stuff's pretty good at this point i think just to gently cover up the um frozen materials with and the worms are pretty quick as you can see if they want to get away from something if they don't like the bright lights they don't like something too chilly i think they'll have no problem um, retreating from it but you know what before we close up this feeding area we've got all these leftovers i'd like to roll all these leftovers back down into the central area here been feeding right down the middle which is kind of my customary feeding method but i've got a couple bins where i'm doing some um sort of fun feeding methods one of them is always alternating which corner of the bin you're feeding in so that's always interesting but here we're just kind of going down the middle so i wanted to make sure we backfill that hole with actual foods and stuff so we can submerge those foods a little bit rather than leaving them out on the surface that's just kind of one of my wormery's best practices <laughs> probably because i don't use lids you know i usually have some sometimes pretty flimsy coverings and i don't want to have food stuff out on the surface of my bins if i can help it so we haven't been putting any fresh bedding into this system there's still good sized chunks of it here and there pretty sure this is a piece of bedding maybe coffee filter or something i um i'm wondering if this might be the feeding in which we decide it's time to just begin withholding feedings and let them just work down all the remaining scraps of stuff in this container there's a lot of it I also don't like the idea of getting too close to the rim it makes it a little bit more difficult to work in the bin when it's a little bit overly full I'm gonna take a peek down this edge too before we close up shop we could use some of this stuff after we aerate it to further cover the feeding area 
material looks really nice. Over here it's um, just as damp, I think, but somehow more crumbly, or maybe it's not as damp and that's the reason it's more crumbly. Or maybe it's just more a heavier concentration of actual castings. Again, I keep wondering if there's a difference, um, you know, in the what, what I consider like the front of the bin, only because that's where the label is on the container. So maybe I'll treat the, the label end of the bin as sort of like the front of the container. That's the side that faces into the room so I can see the label. And that's the side of the bin that I believe gets a little bit of warmth from the room itself, just from the air in the room. I think the air right around the walls is a little bit chilly because some of the air, cool air from outside gets in and then drops down right there by the wall, making me think that the wall side of the bin over here is a little bit chillier. So sometimes I expect a little less activity. Maybe that's what I'm seeing here are signs of that. Um, just what appears to be more fine castings, or at least castings that seem to crumble a lot more readily than what we encountered in the very beginning. Again, what we encountered right in the very beginning was directly above where the feedings had been put, where a lot of moisture sometimes gathers. Also kind of in the middle of where the plastic was covering things up. The greatest amount of moisture circuit recirculation happening too, so... Um, I don't know, I think... I think there's a lot of advantage to hanging on to the moisture level we've got right now. It's really nice. I, um, I, I think we're not going to get see a lot of moisture coming from those potatoes we just added, but that piece of cabbage will probably kick off a good bit of moisture as it thaws and begins breaking down. Now, you've got to admit, when we look through this system, worms everywhere, right? You would never think that, you know, this population started out less than a year ago with just, you know, possibly a couple dozen worms. And at times, it seemed to me like it was even not even that many. <laughs> there were a couple times after we sort of collectively made our guesstimate, and I averaged it, and I came up with what I still have recorded in my spreadsheet, I think, the number 23, actually, is the averaged estimate of how many worms are in here. And there were times shortly after that estimate was created that I was pretty skeptical as to whether or not we really had that many worms in here. But um, this bin has nothing to complain about as far as a worm population is concerned at this point and that's how i see it so for me it's been a real educational experience i never really started with a small population and had to build it up i always um i always was lucky enough to begin with a pretty good sized tray full of worms and now i'm finally starting to see what appears to be a, a real rebound to the population so it's really nice to see the numbers in this bin growing and hopefully continuing to grow so i don't know I think maybe a couple more feedings, stuff that's going to break down quickly, hopefully giving time for all that lingering bedding bits to break down. I'm not in a specific timetable, and I don't feel confined by any sort of a number of feedings or dates or anything like that. But, you know, maybe just because we are starting to get near the uh, point where the container's full, maybe that's a good enough reason to uh, put it into the feedings and then let them really start to forage and work down what remains in this container. So we'll make that decision at some point soon, but not today. Today we're done here, <laughs> and uh, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.